So you should have followed me to this point. You should understand the experiment. You should understand that light shifts towards the red and accelerates as it leaves the earth. And why? You should understand the Doppler shift. If you don't understand any of those things, go back and try again or, or maybe forget. I, there's no hope for the physicists. The brainwash is too deep. And if they're actually employed, they won't be employed tomorrow if they say anything contrary to what Einstein said, which was, well, basically nothing. But anyway, this is, let's get this out of the way. This is what you guys are going to say. And, um, Nothing's ever going to change that. So let's go through it again. Let's let's talk about Doppler. When objects are moving together, the light becomes shifts towards the blue because the waves are being scrunched. You see, two objects are moving. The distance is getting smaller, and that's pushing the waves together. With sound, it's because sound waves are being carried by air, but light isn't being carried by anything at all. And if you look at the way the light accelerates away from the Earth or shifts towards the red from the Earth, space is expanding. It is, should I call it the force of expansion? It is expansion. The redshift is expansion. It's expanding space. The ruler has expanded. This is a fact. It's like the police have got a dead body on the floor and there's a man in front of them holding a knife covered in blood <laughs> with a T-shirt that says, it was me. <laughs> I killed him. And they're like, I don't know, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> And if the ruler is expanding, but you don't see it, you see, you're part of the box. You are expanding. Yes, you are expanding. Well, does the pound replicate experiments prove that? Well, it doesn't disprove it because if you can't see the ruler expanding and you're part of the box and you and the ruler and everything else is expanding, you won't see that expansion. You will only see it reflected in the redshift because the redshift isn't made of mass. Excuse me, light isn't made of mass. Light doesn't have to obey this rule about clock speed and time. Light doesn't have any mass. So the Doppler shift, you can calculate the, the rate of that Doppler shift, how, how fast things are moving away from each other. That is the redshift, but you don't see it because it's cosmic expansion. It's cosmic expansion when light accelerates away from the Earth. I don't know why it took me to see that. All these great scientists, they can't see that. The yardstick, the definition of the meter stick, the meter stick grows, okay? So these objects out there in space that look equidistant to us, we call this gravitational redshift. That's not gravitational redshift. Those objects are receding away from us. And yes, the pound Revka experiment proves that. I may not be just saying it quite right, but that's what it, it proves. Because as light moves away, it shifts towards the red, and it has experiences the same red shift as an object that is stationary above the Earth. That isn't gravitational redshift. The light is moving away and it's telling you, the Doppler shift is telling you how fast you and the object that's falling toward you are actually expanding away from each other in the cosmic sense. This isn't an imagination. It isn't my idea. This is proved by the pound Repke experiment. If you will think about it long enough and hard enough and realize that this is the answer. And there are other ways that can contribute to this proof. It, and actually fits everything. All the known observations of physics and science, it fits perfectly. And that is a proof, an empirical proof, um, better than most empirical proofs, I can tell you. It's perfect. Okay, well, let's just 
get on with it here and, and talk about this a little bit more. So as light approaches Earth, the unit of length, a meter stick, will shrink. The wavelength of length will shrink in proportion to that. And the velocity of the clock will, will slow down. And that's why a meter still measures a meter, because the meter consists of the number of wavelengths of light over a given period of time. Scientific fact. I didn't make this up. It isn't my idea. It isn't my hypothesis. It's a fact. And it's also a fact that the pound replicate experiment says nothing whatsoever about Einstein's theories. And the equation that they bring up to show that this is relevant, they toss it out and they use Newton's potential energy. Because it also turns out that the potential energy, that is the rate of falling objects towards the Earth, is exactly the same as the acceleration of light leaving the Earth. And that's not just exact, that's not uniform velocity. I mean, it could be uniform velocity when we see objects that are redshift out there and to physicists say this is gravitational redshift, if we know better than that, it's the expansion of space, just like the light, just like the ruler that is leaving earth. It's the same thing. It's sad, isn't it? Okay. This isn't my theory. This isn't a hypothesis. This is the facts that you can gather from experiments, especially the pound rep can just happens to fit the bill so nicely because it shows that that Doppler shift that's proportional to the change in potential energy. So what's that tell you? It tells you that light is accelerating away from the earth at exactly the same rate that bodies are falling towards the earth. What does that tell you? Well, if space is accelerating, if, if things aren't just redshift because they're moving away at uniform velocity, if it's actually accelerating because you wouldn't actually measure anything. But if space is expanding, and this is matter that's expanding, that's a force. That is an outward force. That's a force, you see. And it happens to match exactly the equal and opposite force of Gravity, fact, facts. It's not my idea. It's not a hypothesis. And maybe you can't get anybody to listen, but you have to try. And for me, you know, being a scientist and a problem solver, it's important for me to know the truth. And this, this is the truth. The big bangers and the Einsteinians are lying to you. Anyway, okay, so um, what more can you say? I mean, that is the cosmic expansion model. It's proved by the pound Revka experiment. But there are other things, of course, that help us understand that. So it doesn't take all that long to say it. Now, Lewis Essen, he is the guy that should have known this and should have figured it out because he was the inventor of the atomic clock. He was the first to accurately measure the speed of light. And he was slated for uh, a Nobel Prize, I'm sure, before he was told his career would be ending soon if he continued to tell the truth about Einstein. And that is, is that these things are theories. It doesn't mean a thing. People have just, well, obviously, there's some really heavy propaganda coming from somewhere that is. Uh, responsible for this. I mean, it's really important that people believe in the Big Bang and they don't know about the cosmic expansion model. I could be the only one in history to ever get it right. So listen to me carefully. You don't understand it? Go back and start again. Or just forget about it. Well, that's coming kind of fast, I guess. But you know, this is my 11th video. And it isn't that hard to grasp. It isn't that hard to see the, the truth. You know, but it seems like I lose people right here. Having just proved this and made it evident, but I'd like to say some more about it, okay? I'd like to 
I'd like you to get past this, this point. I want you to know and understand everything to this point. And if you don't, just if you're not willing to go back and study this and understand exactly what I'm saying, then stop now and don't waste your time. But we could generalize a little bit here that matter is expanding into an external fixed dimension. We can't see it, but we know it's there because the redshift of light tells us that things are expanding away from us. So um, things are also expanding at a rate proportional to their mass. If mass, if the Earth was twice as twice the mass that it is now, then the rate of falling bodies would increase from 9.8 to double that. Well, not the surface of the Earth, because the rate of the force of gravity is proportional to the mass. It's actually the product of two masses, but you know, a small mass is, is, is insignificant relative to the Earth, so we just ignore that. So the more mass you have, you have double the mass, you have double the expansion. And that goes back, let's go back to G, the units of G, at least the units of G that, that we want to use because they really tell us something. And we can adjust those units a little bit so they represent the radius of the universe squared over the mass of the universe times the acceleration of light, the three immutable intrinsic constants of the universe. But then that assumes, doesn't it, that the mass density inside the universe is even. And you know, it's not, it's very coarse, very clunky clumpy, you have a black hole over here, you have deep space over there. And so G is actually a, it's a variable depending on the speed of light. And the speed of light actually is the rate of expansion between any two points or just in general. So if the mass density of the universe is less, then the speed of light will slow down within all other things being equal. And so as that light travels through the universe and it comes across regions of variable density, it's gonna speed up and slow down just like, just like it speeds up as it leaves the earth. It accelerates as it leaves the earth. That's what it's doing. So matter is expanding everywhere in all directions. And if the expansion of the earth is proportional to its mass, the expansion of the universe is proportional to its mass. And of course, that leaves you with only one possible conclusion. And that is that the universe expands at the speed of light. The average speed of light, okay, because it's spanning more or less here, depending on the concentration of matter in this area or that area. Facts. These are facts. Okay. It might seem like I'm traveling a little too quickly here, and uh, but no, I haven't made any mistakes. These are facts that you can draw right from the pound gravity experiment. And of course, if if the universe is expanding at the speed of light, that means, and everywhere is expanding simultaneously, depending on the density of mass in that region, then you would expect all other things being equal and you map in an area of uniform density that the speed of light will be the same in all directions because it is being propagated by expansion. Yeah, it is. That's what Lapis and Morley experiment proved. There was no medium and that the speed of light was the same in all directions. <laughs> Which it, it wouldn't be, of course, because there's, well, at least there's the moon out there and that's gonna kind of muff things up unless the moon is directly overhead or maybe uh, parallel with the interferometer. In other words, we'll see that gradient, but 
you know, I won't get into that right now, but basically if, if there's a moon out there, then Michelson and Morley could not possibly have gotten the equal, okay, come on, you know, you know, they didn't, but it was close, you see, because we're not talking about traveling through a physical medium here. We're just talking about the influence of a, of another body out there that slows the speed of light down a little bit because as light leaves the earth and travels towards the moon, it's going against the grain of the expansion from the moon. It's gonna slow down a little bit, shift towards the blue. Otherwise, light would shift towards the red. Well, it probably still does. The moon isn't that big to completely overpower it, but a black hole would be, okay? A black hole is going to be expanding with a force on the cosmic level at a tremendous rate, and it's gonna drive light. Light is gonna to have to be deflected around it. That's why we have the lens effect. Genius of Einstein, <laughs> come on, let's just use your head here. We've all, we've all forgotten how to think. We've been so brainwashed for so long and the cause of science has been lost. It's been destroyed. It's been defiled by this dog, dog and pony show. Um, all this hype about a big bang and it just isn't true. Of course, you know, it's possible. I mean, it, it would be possible that all objects are receding from each other in the sense that there's an increase of distance from the raisins. I mean, that's a somewhat different uh, type of expansion. But it isn't happening, and you know that because of Einstein's, Einstein, of Newton's G, forget Einstein's cosmological constant. Newton's G is good enough. You can't invent something else. There's no way you could transform Newton's G so that it can diminish in such a way to reduce the force of gravity and reflect an expanding universe. You can't do it because you have radius on the top, you have units of length on the top, and you have units of mass in the bottom. And of course, if you were able to decrease the density by increasing the speed of light without changing those other two variables, or other two constants, excuse me, then it might work, but it doesn't. You can't do it. The universe is fixed in size. Where the acceleration of light and velocity of light are, they reflect uh, fixed mass and density. That's all. That's the rule. Forget Einstein's cosmological constant. All this was bullshit so that the big bangers could have their way because they really didn't know the true model of the universe. Look, here it is. You know, the holy grail of physics. I'm giving it to you. I'm not bragging. I'm not bringing you a theory. I'm not bringing you a hypothesis to make my name good and make myself look smart like the rest of the physicists are. I'm telling you the truth. And I want you to get it. I want you to understand it. So the velocity of C actually depends on the rate of expansion of matter because light is propagated by matter. We can prove that logically with the pound replica experiment and the Michelson-Morley experiment. Even though they lied about the Michelson-Morley experiment, we know they did a little bit, but, um, and of course they did the same thing with the Hefeli Keating experiment, generally. I mean, you can tell. But as far as I can tell, the pound replica experiment, uh, it might have been fudged, but even like the others, it's basically sound in theory. It's just the wrong theory. And we shouldn't have a theory at all. We should have the facts. And if you look at the facts, this is where you end up. Don't let them lie to you anymore. If they're lying to you about that, I mean, that's the biggest lie of all. What else they're lying up to you? I want everything, maybe. Probably. Okay, but hey, I'm not Alex Jones. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know, that's why they kicked me out when I raised these questions. You guys really know what you're talking about, you know, these tensor equations. You go to the physics forum and blah, 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 blah. these guys sound brilliant. I cannot get all of that. I don't even understand. They don't know what they're talking about either because it really doesn't make any sense. But you know, the, the game is, you know, there's a lot of money being paid to people to keep parroting these 
this bullshit. Okay, so forget about that and just focus on what I've been telling you. Okay, again, you know, yeah, this is the pound replica experiment. Okay, we know about Doppler shift, right? When things are moving away, they become red shifted. The light is red shifted. And when light leaves the earth, this is not gravitational red shift. You know, I mean, that's okay for as a term, but it disguises it. It shields the under, underlying understanding of what actually is going on there. When light accelerates away from the earth, the ruler state is expanding. And we don't measure any change in distance because the ruler stick, the ruler, the meter sticks are expanding along with it. They still measure the same distance. But light says it's moving away because it is, because we're inside this box. You see? One side of the box maybe is um, length and the other side is clock speed because if the meter stick expands, it's you know that the clock rate has to increase. It's a fact. I didn't make it up. I didn't make any of this up. The cosmic expansion model is not a theory. It's not a hypothesis. It's the truth. That's what I keep trying to tell people. You know, I don't know, I'm, you know, you're going to talk about this over and over again. But let me take a break now. I'm going to have a little bit of, of, of dinner and uh, collect my thoughts. And I'm sure there's some other things that we can talk about. So let's try to refine our understanding just a little bit here. If an object is falling towards the Earth, and the property of both objects is a for is expansion, cosmic expansion. They're actually expanding and they're moving away from each other. That doesn't make very much sense. Is they're expanding? How come they're moving away from each other? Well, <clears throat> the wild card here is the acceleration of expansion, which is responsible for the force of gravity. So what it would look like from outside the universe, if you're looking in and you can see the whole of everything, everything is indeed expanding, but the force of gravity is causing objects to go the other way. Hmm? No, of course, because the force of expansion, every action produces an equal and opposite reaction, the force of gravity. And so that is causing objects to come together. They're still expanding, by the way, but you can't see it from the inside. You can't from the outside, in which case the Earth is expanding at a greater rate than, than you are. And that's why you're sticking to the Earth. And that would be visible from outside. You, If you had a people, you know, out there somewhere and you're looking at the universe, uh, looking at it inside, you would see the Earth expanding faster than you are and catching up to you at the rate of 9.8 meters per second. I know this is new to you. It might sound kind of crazy, but it is a fact. And it's proved by the experiments <clears throat> that were siphoned off and <laughs> claimed as evidence of Einstein. Okay, I actually don't think Einstein ever predicted the dang thing. All this is arranged by the media. Just look at what's going on, and it's not true. We see from Newton's G, it's impossible for the universe as a whole to expand. It has a radius, it has a mass, and it's fixed. And the dimensions inside are fixed eternally, and they always were fixed eternally, going backwards. Now you don't think about this just a little bit, because if expansion is accelerating, then we should see an increasing redshift for objects that are stationary, should we not? Well, we wouldn't, partly because everything is expanding at the same rate. But I think that, well, I'm not, I don't think, I'm sure that the actual reason is, is that the incremental rate of expansion would be the ratio between the size of the universe. Oh, how am I saying this? If the universe has been expanding at an accelerating rate forever and ever and ever, which it has, or maybe from some point of origin, which 
uh, people seem to be fixed on there has to be an origin and there has to be an end of the universe. But if the universe has been expanding at the rate of the speed of light for billions and billions of years, then the rate of expansion between you and this object out here, okay, you're seeing the red shift, which means you, you know, you're moving apart, that's accurate. You, you can't see any increase in distance because you're part of the box, okay? But because it's accelerating, but it's accelerating at such a tiny fractional rate that you wouldn't see it, you know, distances would appear to be fixed. But it actually, this increase, and, and of course this acceleration is force of acceleration dissipates from the square of the distance from the object. So it doesn't extend very far. So it'd be the tiniest of tiniest differences that you might see. And this is why when you get on the intergalactic level, then you start to see a tiny, tiny redshift. And the physicists they grab onto that and they say, oh, well, that means that objects are moving away from each other. Well, they aren't in the galaxy. Well, that's gravitational redshift. But we know that the gal galaxies are moving away from each other because we can correlate this with what they call standard candles, the brightness of galaxies as they move away. So they can measure, they have a way of measuring yardsticks. No argument there. Good job, guys. The problem is you're not measuring the expansion of the raisins moving apart from each other, you're looking at the differential rates of expansion between that point and this point, billions and billions and billions of years difference during which time the universe has been accelerating, increasing in its acceleration. And of course, that tiny additional bit of redshift will show up and it will correlate with distance. That's what the physicists are measuring and what they say says that the universe is expanding and therefore there had to be a big bang. But as you can see, on that level of the expansion that's actually taking place, we're talking about cosmic expansion, it doesn't matter how far things apart are. If everything is the same relative distance apart, it won't make any difference. This is Einstein's frames of reference, you know. All the laws of physics are the same inside a box or a sphere that contains the universe if it expands. Forever and ever and ever, nothing changes. It's fixed because of the length and clock speed dependence on each other for physical objects. But of course, the light that is traveling is not in, traveling inside the box. It's being pushed, propelled by the expansion of space. Fact, not hypothesis. And if Newton's G won't allow the universe to expand, neither would Einstein's cosmological constant. You have been getting bamboozled, baby. Yeah. It's not true. So, um, what else can you say? Well, one thing I oh, one thing I just like to say I like to talk about this week. But just supposing that you have a universe of uniform density throughout, just for argument's sake, and we have a yardstick in the middle of that, and we have a, it's a little associated clock, but the clock is moving because the yardstick is growing. Now, if the universe starts to expand, if our, if our constant uniform universe starts to expand, then the clock will move. Of course, if you're inside, you know, the box, you will never see that. The clock still won't move, or it might move, it will move, but you will never notice because everything is moving at the same exact rate. It is the acceleration of expansion that not only produces the force of gravity, but makes that watch, makes the, makes the hands on your watch move. Yeah. 
So the redshift that we see is actually the gravitational potential. It's the rate of recession the movement away of bodies in space. That's what that redshift refers to. And the redshift of light as it leaves Earth and accelerates is shifting towards red because space is expanding. And if you're traveling in space out there, you know, in our region of space, of course, the mass density is extremely low. So the speed of light is terribly slow. It's almost nothing. You know, imagine what it's going to be like, you know, in the area around a black hole as light is, is, is uh, escaping or trying to escape. Well, actually, when light is, when, it, when light is, when, mass is expanding at that rate is pushing all the light that's coming at it around it you know so you don't see it. you can't see a light because i guess suppose in a way is swallowing it all but it's actually pushing it away it, the light isn't going inside the black hole and disappearing and accumulating there no no the black hole is actually expanding <clears throat> even though oh, that's counterintuitive isn't it but that actually is what's happening and it's expanding at such a rate that incoming light waves are just simply deflected around it. Anyway, yeah, we were talking about the hands on your watch. Well, actually, if, if you really want to think about it and you really want to meditate on this idea and you've got a handle on it now, okay, I finally succeeded and somebody actually understands me, leave a comment, please, that you see it. Do I want to be the only one in the world to know this? No, I want to tell you about it. And I want to hear you say, oh, yeah, I get it. I'm not a physicist, but I'm a good mathematician. And I can see you're right. So, yeah, I got this funny face because of Lyme disease. You know, it's like Bell's palsy, they call it. Anyway, that's off the subject. I shouldn't be going there. What else have we got to talk about? Well, um, I guess that, did I mention this, that if you took the speed of light in our region of space and you uh, interpolated that using the mass of the Earth and the acceleration of little g, that you would get something like 100 million Earth masses is nothing. So obviously, the speed of light in our region of space is very low because the density of space is really thin. It's, it's weak. There isn't that much matter. The mass density in this region of space is very small. And if you're riding a beam of light and you're moving along and you come across it you know, some you're moving towards the center of the galaxy, say, then the force of expansion is going to be pushing you back. And so you're going to slow down and your waves are going to squish up and they're going to move towards the blue. That's called the blue shift. Proof. Okay. It's just a little counterintuitive, see, because we're part of the expansion and we don't see, we don't see it. In fact, it tends to Look what the reverse of what it is because the accelerating expansion of matter produces the equal and opposite force of gravity. That, uh, you know, so we don't fly off into space. All right, well, uh, what else couldn't we say? I guess I, I'm kind of out of words for right now. And, uh, Maybe I did a better job in the last video. Maybe I'm actually doing a better one now. Well, let's go over the Doppler shift again one more time when objects move together. You know, you understand that. You comprehend that. The waves squish up and it turns towards the blue. And of course, if light is meeting it, an expanding force, it's going to slow down, which is exactly what happens when light is approaching the Earth or any of the body of mass in the reverse when it leaves. And it happens to trace the exact trajectory and rates of velocity as falling objects wherever wherever that light is accelerating uh, objects are falling in the opposite direction moving in the opposite direction retrograde motion is that what you call that does it make sense yeah it makes sense it isn't like like 
diving off a diving board, okay, the equal and opposite force of, uh, of, of one action, but, um, but it's happening at every point in space proportional to the mass density in that region of space. It's actually the raisins that are expanding, right? Not, not the space between them. Yeah, that's right. That's why things seem different and backwards because you've been taught the wrong way all your life. You've had this, these lies banged into your head. Quite right? a big bangers. Okay, so when light is leaving the earth, it's expanding by virtue of a stretched out wavelength and that's causing the meter stick to grow. So if you were going along with it, you wouldn't notice any changes. That's what's called a local observer in Einstein's parlance. It's just that he didn't understand what it was he was talking about. He was trying to get everything through. This is my theory. See, I predicted it. You know, it's like Trump. You know, get over it, guys. Get over it. Aren't you sick and tired of this Paul Bunyan, Blue Ox, Einstein bull? It's not true you see they made the wrong inference here the redshift that they're observing between galaxies is just the residual just the just the accelerating tiny increment of acceleration at the speed of light of a universe that is already enormously large and accelerating at a big c now a little c is accelerating at a big c and it increases at the rate of little c every second that's what accounts for the force of gravity here. It's mathematically and logically sound. This isn't a theory. This isn't a hypothesis. This is the truth of gravity, and it's the truth. It's the correct model of the universe, the cosmic expansion model of the universe, OK? Come with me, okay? Understand it for me, okay? And I'm gonna sign off this time, okay? Enough is enough, thank you, bye-bye.